I call to order this meeting of the Coyote County Board of Education, Agenda 804, 6.30 p.m., Tuesday, November 14th, 2023. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. <laughs> Thank you. you. May be seated. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries seven to zero. Um, recognition is Dr. Horton. Thank you, Mr. Chair. At this time, I'll call on Public Information Officer Dean Jackson to bring us her recognitions. Mr. Jackson. Thank you, Dr. Horton. Good evening, board. We have several recognitions tonight, and our first up is our core business. And tonight, we have a presentation from Canongate Elementary School covering thinking tasks in third grade math. I'm going to call on Canongate Principal John Vaughn to come down and introduce the several students he has here tonight, along with their teacher, uh, Ms. Molly Wilson, also our 2023 Teacher of the Year. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Uh, good evening, board, uh, Dr. Horton, uh, Dr. Guy. Pleasure to be here. Appreciate the opportunity. Um, recognize, recognizing that the five-year strategic plan emphasizes and measures growth and develops and promotes college and career-ready students who are creative, innovative, and collaborative problem solvers, we at Cannon Gate have identified improving our math performance as a point of emphasis in our school improvement plan for this academic year. As part of that focus in this area, we are working on building thinking classrooms as part of a Georgia Department of Education grant. Several grade levels are piloting these thinking classrooms, teaching strategies that promote problem solving and perseverance and empower students to become critical thinkers who are able to evaluate and solve problems in a variety of ways. Mrs. Wilson, as Mr. Jackson said, our Coweta County Teacher of the Year is a third grade teacher. She is here with six of her students to demonstrate one of the ways we are promoting mathematical conversations and problem solving skills. Ms. Wilson. So this year we have new math standards that have been designed to facilitate mathematical conversations and to encourage students to become thinkers. Our standards provide the framework for teachers to engage students to dig into the why behind their answers, which truly elevates their understanding. I'm a longtime proponent of offering students opportunities to exercise a growth mindset. So providing students with challenges to wrestle with a productive struggle is a great way to build student stamina for mathematical thinking and for life. So tonight we have several friends here to demonstrate how th what that looks like in our classroom. I'd like to introduce you to Elijah Craft, Haven Davis, Kaylee Nelson, Olivia Smith, Gavin Thomas and Max Thornton, and I'm going to let them take it away. In our class, we participate in thinking tasks. Miss Wilson randomly groups us with a deck of playing cards. Each group has either two or three students. When we, in our, when we are in our groups, we have certain expectations we follow. We work vertical non-permanent surfaces. You may know them as whiteboards. We are all expected to be engaged in the task and work together. The person holding the marker, though, has to write down what the others are discussing. Yeah. <laughs> Even if you have the marker, you are still responsible for being able to explain your thinking. We are learning how to communicate and improve our thinking. Here's how it looks in our classroom. The Kennedy third graders love field day
other strategies. So why, why did you divide them into those groups? Um, because um, two times six is if you two. Mm -hmm. So Max, oh, I see you have four times three as well. What? How did y'all get to four times three? Oh, we we um, knew that three. If you counted by threes to get to twelve, it would be four times. So then we decided to use the four mm -hmm. in a multiplication of three. Good thinking. To equal twelve. Okay. All right. So you guys have some manipulatives over here. You've got counters. Now, see, so you've divided them into, what do we call these things? Arrays. 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 All right. And so, so you've got them into groups. How did you know to make a row of, like, two rows and then rows of three? What made you do that? Um, it's because we said three rows of three-person stacks. So we did, right here, we did three-person stacks. Okay. There are, and then for the two-person stacks, we did the two people right here. Okay, and so what, what um, I see some equations here. What equations did you come up with, and how would that answer our question? We did 6 times 2, which was 12, and then we did 4 times 2, which was 12, and then we add 12 plus 12, which, is, which got us to 24. And 24 was the number of? Um, helmets and helmets. sacks. And then so how many sacks did we have? So y'all decided that you had 12. How many two-person sacks? I mean, yeah, two-person sacks. Six. six. And then how many three-person sacks? Do you think there's another way you could solve it? Yeah. So we would go on like that for a while. And we go around the room and share uh, each group how they solved it or if you did it a different way. And it's really a great way to build on the strategies we're learning and for them to think it out and converse with each other. It's a lot different doing it up here in front of you guys. But thank you so much for having us. And I think these guys, these mathematical thinkers, need a round of applause. <laughs>
will contribute significantly to the state's educational discourse. If you could, please give a round of applause for Easton Mosquera. Easton, come on down and get your picture made. And for our final recognition tonight, the Coweta Water Education Team is here to be recognized for 15 years of service to our school system. Uh, members of that team are here, and I'm going to call on Science Curriculum Specialist Dr. Donald White to introduce. Good evening, everyone. Uh, 15 years ago in 2008, I started a new chapter in my education career. I left my classroom at Northgate and became a science content specialist for the school system. One of my first experiences in this role was to meet with a group of community members interested in educating our students and teachers on the importance of water. At the time, I had no idea where my journeys with that group would take me. Tonight, it is my honor to present a group that has been the cornerstone of environmental education in our community, the Coweta Water Education Team, also known as CWET. For 15 years, CWET has been educating our students and supporting our teachers in understanding and appreciating the role of water in our lives and our environment. Their dedication to providing curriculum materials and field trip experiences has enriched our students' learning journey. More than just a provider of educational resources, CWET has been instrumental in offering unique summer water adventures for our teachers. These experiences enable educators to work alongside professionals in the field, gaining invaluable hands-on experience in water-related research and recreation. Uh, this not only enhances their knowledge, but empowers them to bring real-world insights back to our classrooms. In recognition of the outstanding contributions, CWET was honored by the Georgia House of Representatives in 2012, a testament to their impact not only in our district but across the state. The collaborative spirit of CWET is the backbone, comprising representatives from the Chattahoochee River Keepers, City of Noonan, Coweta County School System, Coweta STEM Institute, Coweta UGA Extension Office, Coweta Water and Sewerage Authority, Keaton and Beautiful, Noonan Utilities, Niagara Bottling, and Yamaha Motors. This team embodies a diverse and robust partnership dedicated to environmental education and stewardship. As we acknowledge their 15 years of service, please join me in, in recognizing and celebrating the outstanding contributions of the Coweta Water Education Team. With me tonight, I have uh, representatives from different groups that are with us, from uh, Coweta Water and Sewerage Authority, Jay Boren, from Noonan Utilities Water Operations, uh, uh, Brandon Lovett, from Keep Noonan Beautiful, Paige Beckwith, from Yamaha, Jason Brochier, and from the uh, Coweta UGA Extension Office, uh, Stephanie Butcher. Uh, please join me in recognizing the hard work of these folks over the past 15 years. All right. Thank you, Dean. Um, we're moving on from recognitions. Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes of October 10th, 2023? So moved. Second. Is, any discussion? All those in favor? 
Motion carries seven to zero. Action items, group one, Dr. Horton. I was going to say, Mr. Chairman, I believe the elementary school kids are ready to get out. You are welcome. You are welcome to be dismissed. And you guys did a fantastic job. Fantastic. Great job, guys. All right, Mr. Chair, the first action item I have for you in group one is to approve early payroll for December 2023. Uh, if approved, the early payroll will be issued on December 15th, uh, 2023. It's the day students and staff get out for Christmas. Um, Mr. Chair, I recommend approval. You've heard the, rec <clears throat> the recommendation of the superintendent to approve early payroll for December 2023. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries seven to zero. The next item I have for you in group one is to approve a proposal from Willis Road Elementary School for the construction of a walking track. Willis Road Elementary School requests approval for construction of a walking track at the school. Project will be funded by the Willis Road Elementary PTO. Total cost uh, for the project for materials and installation is $23,450. Requirements of board policy FEAE have been met and supporting documentation is attached. Mr. Chair, I recommend approval. You've heard the recommendation of the superintendent to approve a proposal from Willis Road Elementary School for the construction of a walking track. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries seven to zero. The next item I have for you in group one is to approve a proposal from Canongate Elementary School for a four shade structure. Canongate Elementary School PTO requests approval to purchase four shade structures for the playground at the school. Estimated project cost is $40,703.26. Requirements of board policy FEAE have been met. Supporting documentation is attached. Uh, the project will be funded by the Canongate Elementary PTO. Mr. Chair, I recommend approval. You've heard the recommendation of the superintendent to approve a proposal from Cannon Gate Elementary School for a four shade structure. Is there a motion for approval? Is there second. a second? Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries seven to zero. The next action item I have for you in group one is to approve the Central Educational Center charter application. The charter provides the flexibility contract, which has been requested, approved, and utilized by CEC since its inception. The first CEC charter was approved in 1999 for implementation during the 2000-2001 school year. State Board of the Technical College System of Georgia has already recommended to the State Department of Education that the CEC charter be renewed for another five-year period. That recommendation occurred because CEC successfully completed and achieved the Dr. Joe Harless Georgia College and Career Academy certification during 2023. The CEC board unanimously approved the attached CEC charter application at its November 2nd regularly scheduled meeting. If this board approves, we will send these documents to the State Board of Education, who must receive these by December. If the State Board of Education approves, CEC and the Coweta County Board of Education will receive the new charter uh, for the period July 1st, 2024 through June 30th of 2029 for signatures during the spring. Mr. Chair, I recommend approval. You've heard the recommendation of the superintendent to approve the Central Educational Center charter application. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Should we throw it down to Mr. Throw it Whitlock? To Mr. Whitlock for some discussion. Thank you very much. Wanted to introduce some some friends who are here. Mr. Pat Patton teaches audio production. Hap Hines, our principal. Laura Horton, who's a board member and also teaches uh, video audio interns. Sarah Jacobs, who's a board member, president, Coweta County Development Authority. Lynette Hannes, a board member teaches eighth grade math. Candace Boothby, a board member and CEO of Noonan Coweta Chamber. David Keller, the retired CEO and managing director of EGO North America, who's a board member. Phil Tricky, retired VP for administration for Yamaha, uh, is a board member and chair. Dr. Julie Post, president of West Georgia Technical College, is a board member. Thanks to them. Thanks to these students who are over here producing this board meeting tonight. 
you guys are the reason that we do this, and we appreciate what you do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Whitlock, and thank you all for being here. Some heavy hitters, you know. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's really nice. Y'all do a great job at, at CEC. Uh, it is my district, so I am very proud of it. Um, so, look, we really appreciate all that y'all do every day. I mean, you really are providing another option for students who just may not want to do the, do the college route. So, seriously, thank you all. If uh, we can ever do anything, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you, Mr. I Chief. guess maybe prove this. <laughs> I would also, I would also like to add, thank you for your vision, Dr. Whitlock, for so many years ago to see that not all children may want to track that there's other options in public education. And um, your vision has been shared worldwide and nationwide. And for that, it is my honor to approve this. Thank you for your hard work. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. This, this has been replicated 53 times across Georgia. The state spent $160 million to replicate what we all in this community began. And Dr. Whitlock, I'll tell you this, I traveled around the state some, when I see those other, I guess, other 52 or 53 times, I always point out to the people that, uh, that may have some uh, in that community where that started. So uh, <laughs> appreciate what y'all do, it's great, thank, thank you. you. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries seven to zero. The last action item I have for you in group one is to approve a contingency change request to install concrete paving and bollards at the new stadium entrance at Noonan High School. Approvals requested for a contingency change to modify the paving on the new Armory Road entrance to the stadium from a four inch thick concrete sidewalk to seven inch thick reinforced concrete pavement and to add a removable bollard for access control. The design intent was to convert this access road into a 12 foot wide pedestrian sidewalk from Armory Road to the stadium. Upon further consideration, it was determined that it would be advantageous to use this drive for maintenance and emergency vehicles. Total contingency change amount is $17,053.48. Contingency change request and supporting documentation is attached. Mr. Chair, I recommend approval. You've heard the recommendation of the superintendent to approve a contingency change request to install concrete paving and bollards at the new stadium entrance. Is there a motion for approval? Is there a second? Second. Um, all, any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries seven to zero. Uh, no action items in group two, group three bids. For your trips tonight, I'll turn it over to Dr. Guy. Dr. Guy. Thank you, Dr. Horton. The principal of Noonan High School requests permission for the Indoor Winds Band students to compete in the Winter Guard International World Championships in Dayton, Ohio, April 19th through the 22nd, uh, 2024. Students will miss two days of school, but there is no cost to the school system. The principal of Noonan High School also requests permission for the Indoor Wind Band students to compete in the Winter Guard International Southeast Regional Championships in Mount Juliet, Tennessee, March 23rd, 2024. Students will not miss any days of instruction and there's no cost to the school system. The principal of Poplar Road Elementary School requests permission for the chorus and the drama club to travel to Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida from May 16th through the 19th, 2024 to attend the Young Performer edition of Disney Performing Arts Workshop. Students will miss two days of school and there is no cost to the school system. Each request does meet the guidelines of our school board policy for out-of-state trips. Mr. Chair, I recommend approval. Is there a motion to approve the two Noonan High School field trip requests and the one Poplar Road Elementary School field trip request? So moved. Second. Any, dis any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries seven to zero. Superintendent's report, Dr. Horton. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll call on Mr. Chapman to bring your budget report and sales tax. Mr. Chapman. Uh, financial report, we were over this month. That's due to receiving four buses, paying for them in October that were budgeted in the prior year. They should have been received before June 30th. Uh, reimbursement will come from the state and offset the expenditure. Sales tax, just under $3.4 million. Uh, year over year, just under 5% growth. 
this time I'll call on Dr. Guy once again to bring your staff and student attendance. Dr. Guy. Thank you, Dr. Horton. For the third attendance reporting period of this school year, the highest staff attendance goes to Jefferson Parkway Elementary School. Highest student attendance in the program area was Central Educational Center, highest elementary student attendance, Northside Elementary School, and the highest middle school student attendance was Blake Bass Middle School. The highest student attendance at high school, home of the Vikings, Northgate High School. Thank you, Dr. Guy, for your board goal report tonight. I'm gonna to call on System Director of Assessment and Accountability, uh, Dr. Jillian Andrew, and she's gonna to talk to you a little bit about our upcoming strategic planning process. Dr. Andrew. Good evening. Ooh, great to, thanks for having me back. I feel like you might get sick of me after a little bit. Um, five years ago, as part of strategic planning process for the school system, an extensive audit for our district's mission, vision, and beliefs as the county was completed. A plan was created to support that mission, vision, and beliefs and address the needs of our system and emphasize priorities for the future. It is time again to look at Coweta County's strategic plan. In order to begin this process, last summer during the administrative workshop, the strategic leadership team gathered feedback from school administrators. The consensus was that we have only really had a couple of years to actually implement this strategic plan because of what we faced in our world. Um, and that many of our instructional priorities now align with what they were then. What we would like to propose as the plan moving forward is to collect feedback that ensures our priorities are still relevant to all stakeholders and to promote conversations between stakeholders and schools about how our plan supports learning in the future. Dr. Horton and I reviewed our current strategic plan at the school council summit a couple of weeks ago. And tomorrow we're meeting with principals to make sure they understand our process and how to collect this feedback from stakeholders. The steps after that will include sending a feedback form out to as many stakeholders as possible and to meet with community groups. It is our hope that through conversations and data collection that we can revise and reprioritize our current plan to take us through the next five years. If everything goes as we intend, we would like to uh, present our new plan to you at the April board meeting so that it can be um, hopefully implemented starting this summer. Thank you. And board members, that, that strategic plan will carry us from July 1 of 2024 through June 30th of 2029. So we'll spend the next several months uh, gathering that input from various stakeholders and hopefully bring something to you this spring. Mr. Chair, the last item I have for you tonight is the facilities and construction report. Uh, you'll see uh, on the report, Northgate is still uh, hanging out, uh, trying to, to get the final punch list work completed and the final pay request processed. Uh, same thing on the addition, just awaiting some uh, closeout documents and the final pay request there. Uh, if you've been by our three high schools, you will start to see silt fencing there around the uh, softball uh, locker room areas of the field houses. Uh, that project that you approved uh, last month, demolition and grading, uh, should begin sometime in the very near future on those. Uh, band towers, uh, they've done foundation work and electrical rough ends uh, and delivery of the materials for those towers uh, should be sometime in January. Uh, Noonan High School is once again the, the big project we have. We, do, um, we are occupying uh, the, the new gym over there. I know many of you were at the, uh, the opening ceremony for that or the opening open house for that last week. Uh, I actually have the first official basketball game in that facility tonight. Uh, and then the academic buildings, if you've been by there lately, you'll see that uh, block work continues on uh, Wing D, which is the auditorium. Uh, windows are being installed. Actually, today I think they finished window installation on the cafeteria, uh, and they're trying to get everything dried in uh, for for the winter season and uh, work is progressing right on schedule and uh, project completion uh, is still scheduled for uh, this coming July. So board members, that's all I have for you. Thank you, Dr. Horton. Uh, we are 15 minutes ahead, so we will go ahead and jump to the public comment section. 
Um, in order to improve communication between the Board of Education and the citizens of Coweta County, the Board of Education encourages citizens to attend regularly scheduled board meetings and speak on matters of general public education concern. 45 minutes will be set aside for this, pur for this purpose at each Board of Education meeting. To guarantee an orderly, an orderly meeting and to ensure that as many people as possible have an opportunity to speak, the Board of Education has implemented the following rules regarding public comment. Each speaker will be limited to five minutes. The Board of Education will listen to each presentation without comment. After the presentation is made, each board member may respond if he or she wants to, wishes to for a period no longer than one minute each. Only citizens of Coweta County or employees of the Coweta County school system may speak in the public comment portion of the meeting. No grievances will be heard concerning any specific personnel action or any specific county employee except through the grievance procedure set forth in the board's personnel policy. No one will be allowed to discuss any matter involving threatened or pending litigation with the Board of Education during the public comment portion of the meeting. In the need to preserve order in the meeting, no person attending the meeting will be allowed to boo, hiss, cheer, clap, or otherwise show approval or disapproval for any speaker in any manner whatsoever. No signs or placards advocating any action or position will be allowed at the meeting. No personal attacks on any person will be allowed. As the chairman of the board, um, I'm responsible for enforcing these rules. No citizen or, no, or system employee will be retaliated against in any manner whatsoever for speaking on matters of public concern at the Board of Education meeting. Any person not recognized within the allotted time period for public comment will be rescheduled to speak at the next meeting and request um, to speak during the public comment portion of a meeting must be received at the Board of Education office no later than three hours prior to that meeting being called to order. So with that, we will go to our first speaker, Jasmine Meehan. <clears throat> Good evening. Thank you for continuing to allow community comment here at these meetings. Um, I have recently attended a few of the commissioners meetings and it's amazing the difference after coming here for the last two and a half years. I will say the fact that the commissioners start their meeting with a prayer is somewhat comforting to know that we have not fully removed God from Coweta County. It is a disgrace that there isn't more cohesiveness across the county institutions in speaking to the Lord our God. It is clear to me that removing God from our education system was a diabolical error. I once supported that idea, but it now reflects in the lack of morals and values seen in many aspects of schooling. I was wrong. We have allowed evil to have free reign over our children, and at times it is even celebrated. I have witnessed this evil firsthand in our county and with my own children while they were in your care. That was my mistake and one that has been corrected. There are many families now choosing to home educate and withdrawal numbers grow each month and each year. I understand there are many reasons why parents make the decision to remove their children from government schooling. However, a continual theme boils down to a lack of trust. I, for one, do not trust that the same morals and values that once were held in a school building are still there. Specifically in our county, you all, and apparently the gold dome to which you all take instructions, do not have a problem with exposing our youth to inappropriate reading material. This is something I have continued to speak about and forever will see as a huge moral conflict. Some of the materials in the literature are incomprehensible to these young minds. I have been through the database and there is an astounding number of obscene materials in our media centers. Some of this material has been read here to you all. I have sent you emails with examples and yet you all remain silent. Where is your moral compass and where is it taking you? I still cannot grasp how on earth the people elected to make decisions and run our county education system regarding our most precious gifts are lacking in these morals and values. Ms. Dees, you sit up there with your Bible by your side, sometimes using it as a prop. You have a Bible verse quote in all your email replies, at least the few that I have received anyhow. But at the same time, you have nothing to say about books in our schools explaining sexually explicit acts, and in some cases, ped ped pedophilia. As a mother of faith, how can you sit comfortably silent amid all the evil running rampant in the county? Where is your outrage? Any parent sitting up there, or grandparent, how can you consciously not stand up for what is right? What benefit is it to you to ignore the many issues that surround us? 
This is even bigger than books in the media center. We have kids confused about their gender. There's a massive mental health crisis and drug problem in our schools. Bullying is no longer just a child on child issue. We have teachers even bullying children now. This is a societal problem and it has all been orchestrated. All the damage done so far and to be done is intentional. And it's a shame that so many are too blinded to see it. Worse, our leaders and officials are lacking the courage to even condemn it. And the few that do are labeled in a derogatory way. I have a quote that I would like to share from Antonio Gramsci. If you do not know his name, you should look him up. He's quite fascinating. He was an Italian Marxist philosopher, among other titles, including an author, who founded the Communist Party of Italy in 1921. He's considered one of the most influential Marxists of the 20th century. He is quoted saying, socialism is precisely the religion that must overwhelm Christianity. In the new order, socialism will triumph by capturing the culture via infiltration of schools, universities, churches, and the media by transforming the consciousness of society. And what an influence he has had among many other Marxists in history. And our own American Democrat Party has taken these teachings and is injecting them into our culture state by state and has been doing it for some time now. Some of us are only just in the past couple of years seeing the actual results. Many of the so-called conspiracy theorists have been trying to expose these evils for decades. Everyday citizens cannot comprehend it, and some still don't. But I get it now, and I do not feel it is too late to stop it. We are in perilous times. I have called it a spiritual war in the past, and that is exactly what it is. And when our time comes to stand before God, I urge you to consider what you might say to him in defense of your lack of action in this season. Thank you. Alan Brading. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. I missed you all last month. I'm sure you missed me. In September, I attempted to answer the question, who are the Marxists? I explained how, among many other things, dedicated Marxists have for 100 years relentlessly marched through the education system and gained control, especially at the university level. The fruit of that effort has been evident just in the last month as hordes of indoctrinated college students have been at the forefront of destructive demonstrations on behalf of the supposed oppressed, seemingly oblivious to those who they, th they so fervently support were, uh, were guilty of, of organized uh, mass murder in a troubled part of the world and who would not think twice about throwing many of the demonstrators off the rooftops of buildings or of subjecting them to other unspeakable atrocities. This is what you get when you alienate and separate children from their families and subject them to relentless indoctrination. But now I'd like to set that awful subject aside and return to the cause of it some other time. In the spirit of Thanksgiving week, I'd like to tell you what, in my opinion, our greatest citizen and leader had to say to the nation on the occasion of the first national Thanksgiving celebration after our independence. By the President of the United States of America, a proclamation. Whereas it is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey his will, to be grateful for his benefits, and humbly to implore his protection and favor. And whereas both houses of Congress have, by their joint committee, requested me to, to recommend to the people of the United States a day of public thanksgiving and prayer to be observed by acknowledging with grateful hearts the many signal favors of Almighty God, especially by affording them an opportunity to peaceably to establish a form of government for their safety and happiness. Now, therefore, I do recommend and assign Thursday, the 26th day of November next, to be devoted by the people of these states to the service of that great and glorious being who is the beneficent author of all the good that was, that is, or that will be, that we may then unite in rendering unto him our sincere and hum humble thanks for his kind care and protection of the people of this country previous to their becoming a nation, 
for the signal and manifold mercies and the favorable interpositions of his providence, which we experienced in the course and conclusion of the late war, for the great degree of tranquility, union, and plenty which we have since enjoyed, for the peaceable and rational manner in which we have been enabled to establish constitutions of government for our safety and happiness, and particularly the, the national one now lately instituted for the civil and religious liberty with which we are blessed and the means which we have of acquiring, diffusing useful knowledge and in general for all the great and various favors which he hath been ple pleased to confer upon us. And also that we may then unite in most humbly offering our prayers and supplications to the great Lord and ruler of nations and beseech him to pardon our national and other transgressions to enable us all, whether in public or private stations, to perform our several rel and relative duties properly and punctually, to render our national government a blessing to all the people by constantly being a government of wise, just, and constitutional laws, discreetly and faithfully executed and obeyed, to protect and guide all sovereign nations, especially such as have shown kindness unto us, and to bless them with good government, peace, and con concord, to promote the knowledge and practice of true religion and virtue, and the increase of science among them and us, and generally to grant unto all mankind such a degree of temporal prosperity as he alone knows to be best. Given under my hand at the city of New York, the third day of October in the year of our Lord, 1789, George Washington. I hope that you would take these words to heart and let them inspire you to do what is right and just. Happy Thanksgiving to you all. Thank you all for being in attendance this evening, both online and in person. Also thank the members of the public who signed up to speak. There will not be any public comment responses from the board this evening. Are there any board comments moving on there? Yes, there are. <clears throat> Excuse me, I seem to have lost my voice. I keep coughing over here. I just wanted to give a shout out to the East Coweta High School dance team. Many of you didn't, don't know that we have one, but these, little, these girls are um, phenomenal. I got to see them on Sunday night. Haley Faust, she is a member of that team. You, many of you met her last month. She was, uh, or two months ago, she was here as a GSBA student advisor. And so she, I was very excited to go out and support that dance team and to see Haley, who is going to be representing us. She will be with us in Atlanta at the Georgia School Board Association. Very excited to hear that. And I wanted to let you guys know that, um, that she was excited uh, that she'll see you guys all in Atlanta next month. And just wanted to tell you guys, happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, Mrs. Dees. I want to give a quick shout out to, uh, I guess you could say, girls sports here in Coweta County. It's been a, quite a few weeks. We had each of our high schools, East Coweta, Noonan, and uh, Northgate. That was the other one, right? Uh, they all participated in the cheerleading championship, which Northgate actually won the Class 5A. I believe that's their 11th uh, state championship in, I think, the last 20 years or so, 17 years. So great job to them. And then Noonan. Noonan girls softball team, each of the three schools, their softball programs made it to state. Uh, Noonan won the state championship. It's the first state, found out today, first state championship for Noonan High School since 1991. So wow. congratulations to them. And uh, EC and Northgate didn't fare as well. They only came in second place. So uh, <laughs> great, great softball uh, being played here in Coweta County. Also tomorrow night, if you're around, tomorrow night is the Coweta County uh, Middle School Athletic League. Uh, championship football game. Blake Bass and Evans are playing at Northgate at 615. Come out and support uh, those kids as well. Thank you, Mr. DeBose. Are there any other comments? Okay, hearing none, is there a motion to approve to enter into executive session to discuss personnel, real estate, and potential litigation? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries seven to zero. <clears throat> 